if you tried to count every single issue over the years caused by an integer overflow or underflow, you'd probably age a good couple of years just trying to do so. So underflow is when a number goes under the integer minimum, and then overflow is the opposite, when the number goes over the maximum. How this situation gets handled determines whether or not certain classes of bugs are just possible in the first place. And how to handle these overflows and underflows is exactly what is being discussed in the kernel right now. This is mitigating unexpected arithmetic overflow started by Keys Cook of Google. Over the last decade or so, our work hardened against weaknesses in various kernel APIs and eliminating the ambiguities in C language semantics have traditionally been somewhat off in one corner or another of the Linux code base. This topic is going to be much different as it is ultimately about the C type system, which is rather front and center. So hold onto your hats while I try to explain what's desired here. Please try to reserve judgment until the end. This is how I feel about every single thing I talk about, and maybe I should say it at the start of every single video. So what is the problem to solve? The Linux kernel has consistently suffered from unexpected arithmetic overflow bugs. These lead to any number of exploitable conditions, our continuing efforts to improve things with ref count t, alloc size, etc. have helped in some specific areas, but on the whole, we've had a relatively unchanged count of serious arithmetic overflow flaws over the life of the project. This is not tolerable, and we should, all of us, make the effort needed to put an end to it in a systematic way. In this context, when we're talking about overflow and underflow, we are specifically talking about wraparound. This is when a number goes over the limit and then wraps around to the bottom, or it goes below the limit and then wraps around to the top. What we are not talking about is unexpected arithmetic behavior. This wraparound is expected. It's just not always the intended thing in that section of the code. The condition we need to catch is the case of unexpected wraparound. We have plenty of places in the kernel where we expect wraparound, and many places in the kernel where we attempt to manually check for wraparound. What is not covered are the cases where a check is missing or poorly implemented. Some of the more insidious bugs come from places where assumptions about the possible value ranges of variables are wrong or got changed, or were never considered in the first place. But fundamentally, the exceptional condition is the wraparound. Most balance checks associated with a given calculation are prepared for a non-wrapping value range. Having a calculation wraparound is what ends up knocking the rest of the logic on its head. So say you expect a number between 5 and 50, and you have a number that wraps all the way around, and in reality, it's 500. But the number you are seeing is 37. So you might handle that code in a way expecting it to be actually 37. But it's not really that, it's actually 500, and the logic is just trying to make this fit. This is the cornerstone of the problem. Even though the behavior of overflow is well defined, many authors often don't correctly handle it, and the results threaten the integrity of Linux as a whole. C makes it too easy to get this wrong, so we are left needing to fix this at the fundamental level. This is not a developer education problem. It is a problem with the C language semantics, just do it correctly, has not worked. It is very important to remember that at the end of the day, a kernel developer isn't anything special. Yes, they work on the Linux kernel. Yes, they write really low-level code. But they're just a person, and sometimes people make mistakes. And when you're dealing with a project as big as the Linux kernel, sometimes those mistakes make their way in, and nobody notices them for one month, six months, one year, five years, and eventually something trips up the problem. On a similar note, when making large-scale changes to Linux where we're adding a check that didn't exist before, we must not break the old behavior as we're migrating to a new behavior slash expectation. This has served us well across many hardening transitions we've made. Most recently, this has been exemplified by the array bounds checking, when new checks are effectively phased in as a warn, and once they had sufficient bake time, usually measured in years, the check becomes more strongly enforced, all the while there is a steady stream of refactoring going on to adopt the new behavior slash pattern. You can't just bring a change into the kernel that 
fundamentally changes everything. There is a lot of code that needs to be migrated over. And it's not just a matter of, you know, control F and then find all the cases we need to replace. Like, there is a lot of things that will need to be modified. In some cases, you might need to go and modify some logic and adapt some drivers that hasn't been touched in 10 plus years. And really, it's just a lot of effort to do. Just like any other kind of filtering, coverage for an exceptional state is best done with an allow list, not a block list. That being a white list, not a black list. Using a block list requires one to know in advance which instances need to be caught. If you knew which instances need to be caught, you would have fixed them already. As mentioned above, we've spent decades proving we don't adequately know where we need to catch the overflows. Therefore, we need to take an allow list approach. We must identify the places where wraparound is expected so that what remains is where it is not expected. That which has not yet been identified therefore remains suspect, you might say. Sus. And we can incrementally grow the allow list since any not yet identified false positives will not break any existing behaviors. C has no formal exception handling system. Now, different code bases will handle this differently, but what you'll traditionally see is out of range values being used as an exception. Obviously, this requires additional parsing outside of the function to make this work, and if you're paying attention, it will work. The problem is you just gotta pay attention. That's the issue. And the standard arithmetic was never designed to fail. This is similar to the many problematic standard C library routines, e.g. memcopy, which were also never designed to have such a failure case. This puts us in the uncomfortable but familiar situation where overflow mitigation becomes all or nothing. And this is what informs the approach detailed in mitigation considerations, warn but allow wraparound until we find all false positives. So don't stop wraparound happening in every single case. Wraparound, in some cases, is what the developer is intending. But in cases where you're not sure, throw a compiler warning instead of just stopping it altogether. The lack of unambiguous arithmetic intent in C has been recognized and addressed in more modern languages, but we're faced with needing to solve it in C for Linux today. There is never going to be a case where the Linux kernel is rewritten in another language. Yes, there is work being done with Rust in the Linux internals and making sure those APIs are available, and certain parts of the code base are absolutely going to use Rust. But there are some subsystems which have no interest in touching it, and others which might go full Rust. But it's not going to be a full rewrite. There is no point even suggesting that. C has no operator overloading. This is where you can take things like a minus or a plus and then actually change the functionality of that operator. Generally, it's best to avoid doing so as doing so can be confusing. But if your intent is to specifically deal with wraparound cases with arithmetic, there actually is some value in messing with that. And the only practical way to change types is via attributes, which are additive in nature. Whatever the solution, we'll need to create new wrapping types that are separate from the existing types, and the existing types will become the non-wrapping types. So if you want to make use of a wrapping number, you would use one of these new wrapping types, but if your intention is for the number to not wrap, you would use the existing types. C also performs implicit integer promotion, an implicit integer truncation. So things that look like they would overflow don't overflow until they get stored. For example, in u8 var equals 255 and then increment that number by one during what is var plus one, the var plus one doesn't overflow because it has been promoted to an int, which happily holds 256 without overflow. But the resulting var, that being a u8 var 256, gets truncated to zero, effectively wrapping around. So to properly mitigate integer overflows in C, we must deal with both overflowing calculations and truncated assignments. It's become clear from our investigatory efforts with arithmetic overflow mitigation that Linux has very few intentional overflows involving signed calculations, that being a number that supports both negative and positive numbers. These overflows tend to be either legitimate bugs many harmless, or are using a sign type when an unsigned type was intended, e.g. expecting to operate above int max and possibly expecting wraparound. For unsigned calculations, this being a number that doesn't have negatives though, 
many places are expecting to be wrapping, hashes, counters, etc. As a result, there will be much more work involved to deal with unsigned calculations, but these are also the calculations that have led to most of our wraparound flaws, e.g. sizes, indexes, etc. We need to be able to make changes incrementally. The proven successful development strategy of Linux generally, we cannot have a flag day. We cannot have a day where at that point, if code has not been migrated over, that code now no longer works properly. That is just not viable in a project at the scale of the Linux kernel. Now this has been done, but it's usually over a really long lifespan, like five, 10 years, and it's for drivers that people aren't really maintaining anymore. So then, we have two possible solutions. The first one is use sanitizers. These are used to automatically detect some form of dangerous pattern. In this case, it would be an overflow or an underflow. There already exists for both GCC and Clang several sanitizers that were created specifically for handling integer overflow and implicit truncation, the fun sibling to integer overflow. These today already handle the unexpected overflow conditions we need to catch. Some changes will need to be made to the compiler toolchain, changes to Linux and things like that, but there are some pros here. Much of the compiler work is done. Sanitized semantics are well defined. Binary changes are well understood. Other sanitizers have been in production for use for several years now, and a bootable proof of concept already exists. That bootable concept being work coming directly from Keys Cook himself. Now, the second approach is operator overloading. I did say that operator overloading isn't supported in C before. That's technically true. But among some recent C standard proposals was operator overloading without name mangling. This could allow for the redefinition of basic arithmetic operators overloaded via small static inline helpers. This could allow for arbitrary handling of overflows within those helpers, using type defs to distinguish the wrapping types. Once again, this would need a bunch of changes in both the compiler and the Linux side. Also, it has some pros. It has a pro and a bunch more cons. Pros. Flexibility of overflow resolution strategy. Though this is currently a non-go, this lets them do lots of different things but they still need to come up with a solution. Cons. Semantics are not fully defined. Amount of compiler work needed is unknown. More work on the Linux side than solution number one. May not handle implicit integer truncation. Unknown impact on binary output. E.g. does the compiler handle composing the overloaded operators sanely? Is optimization trashed due to using inlines for everything? Etc. Now, as you might expect, there was a bit of discussion, not as much as I thought, though. One comment in particular I want to focus on, and that being from the one and only Linus Torvalds. It has been quite a while since we've had a good Linus rant. Get ready for a good Linus rant. I'm still entirely unconvinced. The thing is, wraparound is not only well-defined, it's common and expected. For example, this right here. And damn it, I absolutely do not think we should annotate this as some kind of special multiply. I have no idea how many of these exist, but I am 100% convinced that making humans annotate this and making the source code worse is absolutely the wrong approach. Going back to the solution before, he wants to have some sort of allow list, so this would need to be marked as an allowable overflow. Basically, unsigned arithmetic is well defined as wrapping around, and it is so for a good reason. So I'm going to have a hard requirement that any compiler complaints need to be really, really sane. They need to detect when people do things like this on purpose. And then they need to shut up about the fact that wraparound happens. Any tool that is so stupid as to complain about wraparound in the above is a broken tool that needs to be ignored. Really, this is non-negotiable. So I think you need to limit your wraparound complaints and really think about how to limit them. If you go, wraparound is wrong as some kind of general rule, I'm going to ignore you, and I'm going to tell people to ignore you and refuse any idiotic patches that are the result of such idiotic rules. Put another way, the absolute first and fundamental thing you should look at is to make sure tools don't complain about sane behavior. 
until you have done that and have taken this seriously, this discussion is not going to ever result in anything productive. A tool that doesn't look at how the result is used and just blindly says wraparound error is a tool that I think is actively detrimental. And no, the answer is absolutely not to add cognitive load on kernel developers by adding yet more random helper types and or functions. We already expect a lot of kernel developers. We should not add on to that burden because of your pet project. Put another way, I am putting the onus on you to make sure your pet project is the yogi bear of pet projects, smarter than your average bear. As long as you're approaching this from a, this puts the onus on others, you are the problem. Be the solution, not the problem. Linus is back in full form. A reply like this doesn't mean it's never going to happen. Never forget that Linus's original replies to the Rust proposal was basically the same. He thought it was absolute garbage, they didn't think it through properly, and had no business coming to the kernel with it. So things can change over time, and if it does improve, Linus's opinion will change. But at least for now, um, don't expect this to change anytime soon. Even if it does, it's probably not going to affect you anyway. Maybe there'll be a few less bugs over the years though. But let me know your thoughts down below. Did you know about this happening? And do you, I don't know, do you like Linus when he's angry Linus? I'd love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scrabs Libera Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and we all love Linus.